Hi guys, it's Debbie and today I would like to speak about David Fincher's 1999 film Fight Club. In particular, I would like to speak of how the concept of sex is presented within the plot, as it is a very important theme and it helps us to understand the characters' behaviours and actions within the story. I would not recommend watching this video if you haven't seen the film or if you haven't read the novel on which it is based, because it will contain spoilers about the whole plot. Now, the world in which Fight Club is set is presented as a demanding society in which an individual is constantly under pressure to conform to the rest to the mass. Mm. To quote a line from the film, advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate in order to buy shit we don't need. When we first meet the main character, the narrator, he is presented as deeply depressed, helpless and unsatisfied with his life and everything that surrounds him. He has little to no social interaction and spends his sleepless days and nights staring at the TV, watching countless empty advertisements. The narrator hates this reality, he wishes he could destroy everything, he wishes he could pick up the courage to be free to not have to conform in order to be happy. But by copying everybody surrounding him living what he perceives as happy middle class lives, the narrator ends up buying anything he finds necessary to obtain comfort. For example, he fills his apartment with dozens of items brought from Ikea, the ultimate shopping destination for a conformed, adequately priced lifestyle. Again, to quote the film, what kind of diner set defines me as a person? And this idea of conforming is one of the many ways in which sex is introduced to the plot. The narrator feels overwhelmed by an ultra-sexualized world. He does not hate the sexual component of it, he hates that it is illogical. He does not want to comply with society's extreme and unrealistic body standards in order to be considered normal. And he is jealous and sad of the idea of an alpha man considered by society physically perfect and uh, the ultimate object of sexual desire. He says he feels sorry for men which pack gyms in order to, to become models and he asks himself, is that what a man looks like? Sex in Fight Club is not seen as something steamy or a love gesture. It is shown as something which torments the narrator's chaotic mind. And the narrator's frustration increases as this concept of sex is ambiguous. On the one hand, in our society, we do not have sexual freedom. We're not even allowed to speak about sex. For example, in the film, it is explained that a sex toy must be referred to as a dildo, never your dildo, demonising the idea of masturbation. But at the same time, individuals are required to be sexually active and attractive in order to find their, their place as normal uh, functioning individuals in society. The narrator's inner rage, constant depression and uh, his feeling of, of being inadequate in society are vented out, expressed uh, through an imaginary counterpart, Tyler Durden, which represents total anarchy, chaos, going against society's norms uh, and every Everything he has always wanted to be, reaching the apex of extreme uh, hypermasculinity. Tyler is the opposite of the narrator. He is easygoing, outspoken, he wears uh, flashy clothes in contrast to, to the narrator's plain suits. He has no care for the world, for society's norms, he even hates useless small talk. And he is a symbol of standardised sexual attraction. To quote Tyler, I look how you want to look, I fuck like you want to fuck, I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I am free in all the ways you are not. As a matter of fact, when speaking of his relationship with sex, he represents the typical standard advertisement body. But at the same time, the self-confidence with sex, the freedom, the not caring about society's norms. He actually says masturbation is self-improvement, a thing that probably nobody in the narrator's life would ever say. And by the way, always remember that Tyler Durden and the narrator are the same person. Whether one says a thing or the other, it's always the same mind. Anyway, so under this first aspect, uh, one of the ways in which uh, sex is presented in Fight Club is as being a requirement for normality but at the same time a pressure in a society which there's no sexual freedom. Another way in which sex is presented in the plot is as a, a desperate protection of masculinity. This means that a man in Fight Club must always prove to be physically strong, sexually active, never submissive to society. He must never be perceived as more feminine, reverting to a primitive ideal in which an animal must prove to be the strongest in the pack. For example, in one scene, Marla is shown to own a huge rubber dildo and she reassures the main character that it is not a threat to him. Again, hinted at the fact that uh, what the narrator believes is an alpha male should never be seen in close proximity to a penis, a concept which he reserves to women. And the narrator feels all this pressure because one of the first uh, uh, scenes in which we see him interacting with society is at a support group for men with testicular cancer. In the narrator's mind, these men have been inflicted a wound in what twisted society considers their most important feature. This support group is actually called Remain in Men together and they 
actually chant, uh, we are men, men is what we are, as if society no longer considers them such. And the narrator insists multiple times on the fact that one of the members, Bob, an ex-bodybuilder, now has uh, larger breasts. In his eyes, it is the image of a feminized man. Even just the concept of meditating, meeting, uh, crying, speaking about feelings is considered a weaker activity, an activity for women. And the narrator feels safe in that environment. In seeing the other men suffer, he does not feel as emasculated, and he manages to momentarily overcome his insomnia. The film then continues with uh, examples of other means by which men can prove to be real masculine figures. For example, even the actual Fight Club itself, which represents so many themes that we could that we would never fit into this video, it is also a way by which men can prove to be real men. They strip half naked, they fight until blood is pouring down their faces, then they win, satisfying what the narrator perceives as instinctive, aggressive, primal needs. A man must be willing to feel pain, he will endure it. The narrator no longer feels emasculated, far away from his safe environment of IKEA furniture, of his bland office job of photocopying documents. He is aware of his destructive behaviour, of the damage it is causing, but in a twisted way he thrives in it. And he probably feels alive for the first time in a very long time. The narrator feels more free in risking his own life, in creating chaos, rather than living in a safe environment. He even sees a connection between chaos and beauty. Even the fact used for the Fight Club's activities is procured from discarded material at liposuction centres. So the narrator ultimately destroys the place which is a metaphor of society's beauty standards. At this point, sex loses all its original connotation. It is just cold pleasure. It is something necessary for your social state. There's no affection behind it, not even a, a just a reproductive goal. It's just another depressing aspect of the reality in which the narrator lives. Even the slides of naked people of pornography that um, Tyler inserts into the film no longer affect anybody. This concept of numbness to sex is presented again when Chloe, one of the members of um, one of the narrator's support groups, um, asks if there's anybody willing to have sex with her as she is aware she no longer has a much time to live. And the scene is presented as an instance of cynical dark humour. She awkwardly speaks into the microphone, listing all the pornography and drugs that she has at home, before being comedically pushed away by the group leader amid sniggering from the audience. Again, sex is presented as something non-natural, as something we're numb to. Even the actual sex in the film probably takes up two minutes and the actual visual depiction of it is something like five seconds. It is spoken about more than it is actually carried out. Again, ironising on the importance we give to it, on the status quo we bestow to it. And there's also another interesting scene in which the narrator is in his toilet um, reading a magazine and he curiously, intensely looks at a pull-out poster at the centre of it, but it's no longer pornography. In reality, it's uh, an IKEA furniture catalogue. In all of the masculinity we have spoken about, there is one female character. Marla Singer. Marla is a disruptive element which could represent many things. On the one hand, Marla could represent the narrator's previous hated life. As she appears as the only woman at the support groups, she disrupts his activities, she does not understand him. She could be the element of his past which he hates. The narrator describes her behaviour as invading his spaces. Even when she returns, calls him, asks him where he has been, the narrator insists that his new group is for men only. And she immediately becomes curious and demanding about it, disrupting his masculinity. He is annoyed by her voice during sex and shortly after writes a short poem about the queen bee being slave to the male worker bees instead of overpowering them. On the other hand, she could be a love interest for the narrator, which wants to be total anarchy, which wants to destroy everything around him, refusing even love for a life of pure physical joy. So she could represent the only thing keeping him human, anchored to reality. In a third option, Marla could also represent a, a dilemma the narrator has about his own sexuality. She even gives a ironic hints such as the possibility of lending him one of her dresses, in his mind destroying his masculine status. And all of this if Marla is even real. We know the narrator creates characters in his mind. Do we really ever see Marla interacting with other characters other than uh, Tyler or the narrator? No. Does anybody ever question her presence at the support groups for men? 
No. The narrator even casually picks up the note with her number from the burning rubble from his apartment that had exploded, and it is conveniently just singed on the sides. The scene in which the paramedics are called for her attempted suicide cuts right before they enter her room, never really showing her. Mala doesn't speak like a regular character, just like Tyler doesn't. They both sound like a cluster of deranged thoughts from the narrator's mind. In this case, the sex scenes with Mala would either be the narrator masturbating to her or an idea of her, or an erotic um, dream about her. So in general, the film offers many themes that criticize society, consumerism. It is a depiction of pure anger and chaos, which then in the narrator's mind transforms into what he considers enlightenment. And it offers so much food for thought and so many themes that we could speak about it for days. But today I just wanted to speak about the underlying issue, which is the pressure to conform to a hyper-sexualized, strong, independent, confident personality, which is an unlikely, basically impossible, and definitely twisted turn society has taken. I hope you enjoyed this video. There is one quote with which I'd like to end today, which is a sad insight into the narrator's society, and which makes us think about our own. We are consumers. We are the byproducts of a lifestyle obsession. Murder, crime, poverty, these things do not concern me. What concerns me are celebrity magazines, television with 500 channels, some guy's name on my underwear, Rogaine Viagra Olestra.